Liberace's first appearance at the Hollywood Bowl in 1952 was an important occasion for more than one reason. It marked the beginning of his amazing journey to the peak of costuming history. Obviously, he is my personal hero. He was doing a concert at the Hollywood Bowl, and he said to his manager, I'm going to be so far away from the audience that they're not going to be able to see me. And so I want to wear white. Well, it was unheard of. Nobody had ever worn white at the Hollywood Bowl. Well, he said, that's what I'm going to wear. There'll be a change in the weather and a change in the sea. From now on, there'll be a change in me. My walk will be different, my talk is my name. Nothing about me's gonna be the same. I'll even change my way of living, if that ain't enough. I'll even change the way I strut my stuff. Nobody loves you when you're old and gray. There'll be some changes made today. There'll be some changes made. In 1954, he played to 15,000 fans, mostly ladies, at Madison Square Garden and wore the famous gold lame jacket. He earned $138,000 that night, a fact that was entered in the Guinness Book of Records as the highest single salary ever paid to a pianist. The very next year, Liberace was asked to open the new Riviera Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas at the unheard of salary of $50,000 a week. In 1965, when Liberace was 46 years old, he celebrated his 25th anniversary in show business. The story goes that uh, Elvis Presley was guesting on his show, and uh, Liberace told him that he shouldn't wear anything as simple or mundane as he was going to wear. And why didn't he just put on one of Lee's jackets, which by this time, were made of sequins and glittered. Nobody loves you when you're old and gray. There'll be some changes made today. There'll be some changes made. The costumes really came to a peak in the 60s and 70s, and then, of course, the bulk of his wardrobe money would, would go to creating greater and wilder and more flamboyant costumes, and it was really incredible. We started spending more and more on his costumes. Uh, we did one, he called it his Neptune costume, which was pink with pearls and big seashell designs all over the place. We had another one, a Regency costume, which looked like something out of a royal family. There were double surprises when, when he came out because they'd see the outside, then he'd wave the cape around, you'd see the inside. The whole inside was done with gold feathers. It looked like something out of an Egyptian museum. And then he would lose the cape and you'd really see what the costume was itself before he would sit down at the piano. Lee proposed me by saying to me, I want Anna something very spectacular for this stage. Can you create a cape for me? Something that um, nobody has, has ever worn on, on stage. I said, let me think, what about a, a beautiful milk cape? Because it, it wears better for something for you to enjoy for the very many years to come. What do you think, too much? Why don't I slip out and get into something more spectacular? What do you think, all right? You like this one? Yeah, it's one of my favorites. It's not the loudest outfit in my wardrobe, but it's the most expensive, yeah. You know why? Because of the buttons. They're real diamond buttons, yeah. 
In fact, the buttons cost more than the suit. I have here in this home about 200 suits, 400 sports shirts and slacks, and about 100 pairs of shoes. And believe it or not, I wear them all. I don't blame you for laughing. You know, sometimes I look at all this stuff and I can hardly believe it myself. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> My clothes may look funny, but they're making me the money. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. Oh, wait, wait, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Remember that bank I used to cry all the way to? <laughs> I bought it. <laughs> In the 60s and the 70s, Liberace did personal appearances and concerts all over the world, working at least 32 weeks a year. He performed for Queen Elizabeth and the Queen Mother. He met the Pope and presidents and was friendly with Hollywood's biggest stars, particularly the ones who played Las Vegas and Lake Tahoe, like Tom Jones and Debbie Reynolds. In 1978, 10 years after his summer TV series from London, he returned to television with a spectacular show they called Leapin' Lizards, It's Liberace. A not so candid comment on his similarity to Little Orphan Annie's Daddy Warbucks. I used to need work to fill up the hour. I need to feel that feeling of power. Now every lover need has disappeared from you. Tonight we have a couple with us who were just married today, and it's so seldom I get a chance to dedicate a number to newlyweds this late in the evening. <laughs> so if you don't mind, I'm gonna do a special number just for them because they're a very special couple. It so happens it's the second time around for both of them. She's 65 and he's 71. Isn't that something? And they requested a very beautiful song. It's impossible. That's the name of the song. 